This organized chaos video is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This video is also brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello again. Um, I've had some requests, uh, which I will be covering. Uh, not this episode, though. Uh, right now, with the end of Moon Knight and Doctor Strange 2 also happening recently, we're going to go through, in the next couple episodes, we're going to look at some uh, reactions to uh, those. Because what this is, is going to be uh, re re uh, looking at uh, Neurotic, who I just looked at. We're going to be looking at his response to the end of Moon Knight. Uh, I guess my camera kind of covers it up here. Uh, let's move this. Moon Knight is another Disney Marvel disaster and beta in the corner of the thumbnail. Uh, this looks just the worst. I don't even like it seemed like at the end of that last video, he talked about how Moon Knight was like an MCU thing where it's like women are taking over. But Moon Knight was very much about Moon Knight. Uh, and in the tweet, he seemed to imply that somehow, like, it became Layla's story, even though it it didn't. It, it's still very much uh, Mark and Steven and Moon Knight's story. So I don't know what he's get coming from. And maybe here he's going to try to defend it. But <sighs> I'm so sick of these people. I am so goddamn sick of these people. But, you know, we're, we'll watch this video. We're going to see how... Fucking cringe this is going to get. Well, we're just going to dive right in. Nerderotic.com With Bob Chapik bumbling, the groomers grappling, and the stocks sinking. Disney Marvel needed a hit. Unfortunately, they didn't get one. What if I told you Disney Marvel did it again? Another. God, I can't believe he used the term groomer. I am so sick of the term fucking groomer. You know how many times I've been called groomer in the past, like, two months? You know how you can get instant block on the comments of this channel call me a groomer go ahead or bait and switch our hero in the moon night show not only got her own origin story but she got her own hero moment as she saved our titular character moon knight twice in his own finale so they became a team Ugh. So what? So what? Every time a woman pops up, she has to be a damsel in distress? Is that his argument? Women always have to be a damsel in distress? They can't help out? Oh, God. These people are so goddamn cringe. <laughs> Turns out Layla is yet another gender-swapped, obscure Marvel character. And to be honest, I didn't think Disney Marvel would be that on the nose with this one. Silly me. Everybody knows great writing will rise above everything. It is the cure all. Unfortunately, that's not happening with Disney Marvel, and it is clear they do not know how to make television. Really? You didn't like Moon Knight? Did you not see episodes one and five? They were fantastic, man. And the, the rest of the series was pretty good, but episodes one and five were like top tier material. You can see I have a whole discussion with it with Bobby Quarters on the podcast, but yeah. Moon Knight was great. What are you talking about? And that's just the case here with Moon Knight, the sixth bad D-plus show on... Oh, my God. Uh, bad? Bad? Okay, so I've actually liked most of these shows. I have issues with Disney and Marvel from a corporate standpoint, obviously. But actual show quality, these are pretty good. Uh, my least favorite would probably be What If, but uh, What If was fun. Plus show on the eve of another disaster with Doctor Strange. That will be my another good movie. My next video. This video will be on Moon Knight season one or Moon Knight the miniseries. We're not really sure. Oh, and we'll get to Hot Girl. Oh, um, season one. It's clearly set for another season. Did you even watch the post credit scenes? Jesus. I'm sorry. The Scarlet Scarab? And yes, indeed, we have another entry into the MCU Marvel Phase Bore. I've said it before with Disney Plus, and I will say it again. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> it's not that this was the worst. 
God, so cringe. Disney Plus show. It's just another bad Disney Plus show. It didn't vandalize the character as much as Loki did because you didn't really construct it. I would say it was more on par with Hawkeye, a story about Kate Bishop with a guy named Clint Barton in it who was very apologetic for his Ronin days and he was looking for his wife's watch. Moon Knight was... Well, he did kill a lot of people in his Ronin days and he was the fucking co-star and he actually had a fair bit to do, so shut the fuck up. Based on the comic book character created by Doug Mensch and Don Perlin, but made famous by Doug Mensch and Bill Sankevich. At least the most prolific run for my generation, and still the best in my opinion, because it was a noir Batman-ish comic. We had our main character, Mark Spector, impersonate Stephen Grant, a billionaire, and Jake Lockley, a cab driver, to get access to certain information and people to help him fight crime. It was a cool comic with femme fatales and a pilot named Frenchie. And this show has absolutely nothing to do with it, so there's no reason to talk about it anymore. I did a review on episode one that you can catch right here we're gonna start with episode well yeah the the series deals with him with multiple personalities which is uh i'm pretty sure part of the comic book too i guess i'm not super up on moon Knight. i'm gonna start reading more comic books in fact i'm gonna make a segment where i start reading up some of these comic books everybody bashes on seeing if they're actually as bad as people say i'm betting you they're not so two, as I stated in my first review, and now I can stick with it since I've seen the whole series, this show is not about Moon Knight. It's not really. A <laughs> Who is it about then? Are you going to say Layla just because she has a couple hero moments? It's about Layla. Oh, my God. How much of a damsel in distress does she need to be? Can, does she have to be completely passive to be con like, I swear, if a woman does anything like somewhat like strong you act like oh my god she's taking over the whole series just shut the fuck up with this shit moon knight was definitely the lead character jesus about mark specter it's about layla and stevie i think a better title will be layla saves stevie <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that's the way it's set up steven has uh mark is pretty much a fighter steven less so so Layla is a better fighter than Steven, but not better than Mark. That was awesome. I'm not against making a creative decision that might work better for a TV show, but when you can sniff out the motivation from a mile away, well, it's Disney+. Plus. For instance, when you take the Uber Alpha Steven Grant persona and turn him into a gift shop employee. Ugh. Sure, whatever. I I bet Jesus. I don't I don't even care anymore. This is just You know, I don't Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's look up. Let's look up what uh how Moon Knight works in the comic book. Moon Knight comic book. I will say this. Um I thought the series worked great. Um but I assume the multiple personalities was part of the comic book, right? It is later revealed that Moon Knight has dissociative identity disorder and that the alters as Grant and Lockley originally manifested during his childhood. So, I mean, him having multiple personalities is a comic book thing. Okay. So he just seems like he is upset because it doesn't follow uh, the story run he liked, but it does follow a story from the comic books. Um, yeah, so Stephen Grant is a billionaire businessman in the comic books, uh, and he's not, he's a gift shop owner here. Um, are you dedicated to the character of Stephen Grant? Did he define your adulthood for you? Beta male, who somehow is a stand-in for the fan boy or girl, and then, when he's running from Khonshu, randomly runs into his ex-wife, in London. Was she just riding around on a moped that the actress obviously doesn't know how to ride with all of these tight shots? Yes, so. Well, they actually don't usually have the actors riding on motorcycles, which is the point of the tight shots. Uh, usually stunt people drive them. So when you have a conversation where you see their face, it usually is a tight shot. Um, that's actually super common. Uh, it's common for men too. Uh, but I don't think you'd bring it up if it was a man for some reason. 
So Stevie is still coming to terms with the fact that he has another persona where he thought he was just sleepwalking. And of course, the audience knows this and we're just waiting for the character to catch up. Then he gets saved by his ex-wife who, again, randomly just came across him in the city. Of well, she did almost run him over. And as far as randomly coming across him, he called her. Now, she, he didn't call her saying, hey, come pick me up, but he did call her. So she knew he was somewhere around and something was up. So she was probably looking for him. That was the implication I got. You have 10 million people, and it's not for the first time. And, of course, he sits bitch. Layla, Mark Spector's wife. It's her bike. What the fuck, man? <laughs> wife is not aware of the Stephen Grant persona. They go back to his apartment, his Stephen Grant apartment, she gives him divorce papers, and Stephen Grant starts to fall in love with her because she knows a lot about Egypt. Some fake cops come over to get Stephen Grant. Layla gets away because she's awesome, and they take Stephen Grant back to Arthur Harrow. Well, in the story of the TV series, Stephen Grant is less the fighter. That's more Mark's territory. Layla is kind of a middle ground between the two because they're part of his cult, a cult that he helped build up over years. We're not really sure because we're not really shown. Apparently, he has control of a town in Germany and control of a small part of London. And this is where this multicultural show gets a little racist. So much so that it got called out by one of its own, the male Brie Larson, Simulu. Gisalela, Wakanida. Ni hai, You all speak Chinese and Mandarin. Emotional damage. Arthur wants the MacGuffin Scarab back to help him find his god. Cool. Okay. Um, did that really impact the enjoyment of the series? I guess people who speak Mandarin might be annoyed by that, but I don't speak Mandarin, so I didn't know. Goddess Amit, to whom he is the avatar, but he doesn't get a cool costume. He just runs around looking like Jared Leto with a cane. So after the vegan Arthur Harrow has a conversation with the vegan Stevie over some lentil soup, he asks for the scarab back, and of course, Layla has it, and she brings it back because she needs to save Stevie. Arthur once again summons a jackal and... I swear to God, women cannot, like, carry anything in his mind. They, they just have to be completely subservient. I swear, that's what he's arguing here. Anytime a woman does something good, that's bad. Ugh. What the fuck, man? And we meet Mr. Knight, who is nothing like the Mr. Knight from the comic. After flailing around a little bit, Mark finally convinces Stevie to let him be the real Moon Knight. And no, Mr. Knight is not the real Moon Knight. I'm not that big of a fan of it in the comic books, and it's worse here. And we get some pretty decent Moon Knight action with some bad CGI, and we better enjoy it because we're not getting much this series. Mark argues with Stevie. Of course, he loses the scarab. Arthur ends up with it, and we're off to Egypt. Conchu and Mark can't find Arthur and his scarab, so they decide to have a meeting with the gods, which goes something like this. Conchu eclipses the sun to get a meeting with the gods. By the way, all the gods speak through their very diverse avatars, and Conchu, through Mark, tries to explain to the gods that Arthur Harry Is there a problem that they're diverse? Does it matter? Do they all have to be white guys to make you happy? I'm so sick of this argument and everything. God. It all boils down to white guys. Why does it always have to boil down to white guys? Ugh. Harrow is trying to release Amit. The gods summon Arthur Harrow and ask him if he's going to release Amit. He says no, and they go, okay. The Egyptian gods have banished themselves into the overvoid, and they just observe humanity through their avatars. They don't really want to get involved, and they get pissed at Conchu and say, if you mess with the sky again, we'll encase you in stone. The gods don't know where Amit is buried, but apparently a sage from the past did, so they need to find his stolen sarcophagus. So once again, in a Disney... So we're just going to go over the whole plot line? I mean, okay. I mean, it was a cool show. ...product. We need a map for a MacGuffin. Well, they meet some LARPers getting... Oh, please. Disney didn't invent that. It's all over the place. ...to a fight. Layla fights off a guy twice her size with her necklace knife, and hey, Moon Knight comes out for a little while. Arthur shows up too, but they... Inex yeah, how dare a woman show any strength? Explicably, just let him walk away, and he's not running anywhere fast. Remember, he put glass in his shoes now. Why did he put glass in his shoes? Well, maybe the next three episodes will tell us. Remember when the gods said they would encase Conchu in stone if he messed with the sky? Well, he has to mess with the sky because because the map they got... Uh, the glass in the shoes would be like a belief thing. Like, he feels it is, like, part of his, uh, 
religion. Like, essentially, it's telling you he is a true believer. That's what the glass in the shoes is telling you. He is a true believer. Believer. True believer. Has a constellation on it that shows them the location, but the constellation is where the stars were 2,000 years ago. And instead of using an app, and there are multiple ones you can use, they decide to completely reverse the entire night sky as Egyptians very peacefully watch this happen and not sh themselves. Conchu gets encased in stone and Mar it was kind of trippy, but there's lots of trippy stuff in this series. So, you know, you, you, you kind of roll with it. It kind of works, honestly. Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and that other personality that's a big mystery no longer have any powers. But not to worry, because... Well, I mean, we don't really get strong hints of Jake until a bit later. Because they have Layla, who saves Mark Spector and Stephen Grant. Four saves in three episodes, and these saves are really just... Ugh whatever from a very high caliber machine gun in a truck with some flares so they get to the location and conveniently everyone is gone steven is back in charge and of course layla is leading him around he bumbles around a bit steven makes out with layla so now she is cheating on mark with his other personality you know it probably would have been cheating they're separated and divorcing cheating cheating uh I just don't know what these people. Pretty cool to see Moon Knight fight a mummy, but instead we got to see Layla fight a mummy in the dark. And since there's no Moon Knight in the Moon Knight show, for the next two episodes, we'll just get through the exposition-y bits. It turns out that the former avatar that betrayed Amit was Alexander the Great. God, he's boring. He's boring and sexist. It's, it's the sexist reading of Moon Knight. It's really something I never need in my life, but here we are. Great, and Amit is encased in stone in his throat. We also find out why Layla's father died. Of course, it was Mark's fault. Don't worry, Mark's responsible for more than just that. We'll get to that later. Layla confronts Mark, and he does admit to being there when her father dies. She's obviously upset. Then Arthur Harrow catches up with them. Mark, who still has the statue of Conchu and doesn't give it to her, as he tells her to run so he can buy her some time. Arthur gives Mark a chance to save himself. He fights him off and then gets shot and dies. Dies. Then we spend a lot of time in the Duwa, the Egyptian underworld, with Tarwede, who is the goddess of women and children. I don't know why she's shepherding the dead and not Anubis. American Gods Season 1 did it better. And all of the pivotal character scenes for Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and that unknown persona happen in this episode, but it just drags. This episode drags? Are you serious? This was like the best episode in the series. I loved this episode. Um... As for that unknown persona, did you watch? The unknown persona is not like there. We don't even see the unknown persona until like the mid credit scene. We just get hints of the unknown persona. Did you did you even watch this? Jesus. And it's boring. If they went into, say, the Duat a little earlier, didn't tell us it was the Duat, and then we could question whether or not this was all in Mark's head, that might have been more interesting. Kind of like Fight Club, except... They did this one backwards in Fight Club. The narrator or Joe or Jack, depending on whether you read the book or saw the film, was the main persona. The person we're following in this show is not the main persona because it's the beta male. I'm Jack's complete lack of surprise. So we have a hippo goddess with a British accent guiding. I find it ironic he calls him a beta male. Uh, we will get to that, though. Mark and Steven through the duot and their scales aren't balanced because they're missing a heart, but we find that out later. And they have to get them balanced by discovering Mark's deepest secrets. Now, both personas are being treated as two individual entities, but we find out one of the dark secrets, aside from all of the murders by Mark Spector, which kind of contradicts something later on, but We'll talk about that later. Stephen Grant was created due to, you guessed it, a childhood trauma, which is the same as the retcon in the comic books, except D-plus decided to take that childhood trauma and step it up a little further. Mark Spector had a brother, and he took him down into a cave. The cave flooded, and his brother dies, and he feels responsible. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. We didn't get a bad dad. We got a bad, abusive mom. I'm shocked. The same week, we found out that Admiral Picard had Isn't genre entertainment fun? Thank you for the Star Trek Picard spoilers. I hadn't seen that yet, but cool. Cool, and I apologize for people watching.
In fact, I'll probably bleep, I'll blip that out. So not only was the Pyramid of Giza a safe space during the meeting with the gods, it turns out Stephen Grant is a safe space too for Mark Spector's mom who blamed him for his brother's death. Oh, it also turns out that mom is dead and that the mom that Stephen Grant has been talking to on his phone wasn't really there. This is way better than Moon Knight having a fight with Werewolf by Night. Then Mark has a good will hunting moment. Okay, so yeah, I think the series could definitely use more actual Moon Knight action. That being said, this episode was phenomenal oh my god if you watch this episode and you're not getting choked up you're inhuman with himself then it's back to the duo where mark and steven fight some undead guys and steven sacrifices himself to save mark in the duo and ends up in the sands as mark goes off to the field of reeds but enough of that nonsense it's back to layla in the finale and we don't even see mark specter until 13 minutes in of the 35 minute finale arthur gets amit encased in stone for finale is only 35 minutes i i think i have to call bullshit on that um how long is it okay according to this the finale i don't know if you can see that well the finale is 44 minutes i guess if you give a 10 minute credit time it'd be 34 minutes i doubt there's 10 minutes of credits but whatever from mark's body and takes off to the pyramid of giza where he's gonna go beat the crap out of the rest of the gods avatars arthur leaves the scarab on mark's body for layla to find later she follows him layla's so awesome not only does Kanchu want her to be his next avatar tawadi wants her too she doesn't need to be an avatar for any god or goddess she is a fierce independent woman i mean aside from the fact that she's an uninteresting marvel female person actor i i like layla I thought she was cool. Deal with it. I forgot. Layla not only saves Moon Knight a couple of times this episode, she saves Kanchu, who immediately wants her as his avatar. Of course, she says no. Well, because Kanchu uh, was trapped and Mark was dead. Um, who else will save that? Who else is going to release Kanchu then? <sighs> so Amit is freed. Conchu is freed and Mark's still dead. And yes, we finally get to Mark Spector about a third of the way through the episode. Mark leaves the field of reeds, goes back to the duot. Him and Steven have a bonding moment. Both are allowed to leave the duot somehow because I guess Osiris is a big softy or they were. Uh, well, Tort, uh, God, the hippo one. I can't think of her name, but she was awesome. She was helping them out a lot. And Conchu is the one that gets them out, as I recall. Yeah, Conchu was the one that helped them helped by the giant hippo goddess once again the goddess of motherhood and children who for some reason is shepherding the dead when it's oh my god it's almost like comic books aren't a hundred percent accurate to histories god damn dude not anubis don't really care it's almost like it takes mythology and does its own spin on it right is that weird it's a good thing it followed the norse mythology exactly right 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 a big wave of sand comes up, then the hippo lady in her boat drives a wedge through it, and then they go through the gates, and Conchu brings them back to life. Follow that. Then, all of a sudden, Moon Knight can fly. They fly now? They fly now? But forget all that, because we're here for the Scarlet Scarab origin story. Now, the Scarlet Scarab is a villain from an Invaders comic from the 70s. He was originally a dude, but this is the MCU, so of course they gender swap him into Hawk Girl, who again saves Stephen Grant and Mark Spector multiple times, Moon Knight at least two times in this episode, and Freeze Conchu. Oh, there's one more. She also is the one who knows how to re-imprison Amit. The power of this room will help us bind Amit to Hara's body. Quick, grab my hands, we can start the spell. So the gods who originally needed avatars have a giant... Well, yeah, she was inhabited by Tort, and I assumed... Uh, well, the hippo. God, I'm going um, to fuck up that name, but yeah, I assumed the hippo was the one that knew. Giant kaiju battle in the middle of this, all while Layla, Stevie, and Mark are fighting Arthur. I almost forgot. Hundreds, if not thousands of souls got gobbled up by Amit, never to return. And the big hero moment where a family... Yeah, it's almost like Amit was the fucking villain. And a little girl gets saved belongs to Layla, who apparently is an Egyptian suit. Jesus, you just can't handle it when women do stuff. It's like women do anything. Oh, God. What are they doing? They need to hang out in the kitchen. What are women doing? Like, being, like, proactive. Fuck that. Women can't be proactive. I hate proactive women. That's what you're sounding like, dude. Superhero. Superhero. <laughs> 
المصرية؟ I also need to point out that there's one point where Layla gets trapped up against a car and some guys come up with some guns and just shoot at her wings. Her entire lower torso is exposed. So after the big... Do you complain when uh, that happens with Captain America? Because that Captain America puts up that shield and everybody's shooting at the shield instead of every everywhere else. Now, of course, he's using the shield to block like she's using the wings to block. But yeah, it's the same issue. Egyptian god kaiju fight that destroys much of the Giza plateau and... A thousand souls were eaten by Amit. They finally trap her inside of Arthur Harrow. So Kanchu tells him to finish the job and kill Arthur. Mark refuses and reminds him that once Amit was imprisoned, that he was free of his deal, which Kanchu honors. Then it ends rather abruptly and quite badly. We end up back in limbo quickly with them talking to the psychiatrist Arthur once again. He just Yeah, isn't it terrible where it ends where the character is like coming to one with himself and figure out how best for Steven and Mark to coexist. Isn't it terrible when characters evolve and become better? I hate that. I want characters to just kind of sit around and do nothing. I, I, I want a superhero show where a woman just hangs out in the kitchen and makes dinner for the superhero all day. The superhero never evolves. The superhero just goes out and beats up bank robbers all day. That's what I want. That'd be the best Disney Plus series ever. That's what this guy sounds like. It's discovers his feet are bleeding we can hear jake lockley yes that's the mystery persona was jake lockley we can hear him and steven talking and they end up back in the apartment tied to the bed free of moon night but not so fast we get a post-credit scene of arthur in a real asylum he's taken out by somebody and killed by jake lockley yes that was the post-credit scene not the lamest post-credit scene. That one belongs to Falcon and Winter Soldier. But who in the hell is going to know who Jake Lockley is? And what about all of those people? Okay, I didn't know of Jake Lockley before watching this series. But yeah, the series kind of explains that, yeah, there's definitely a personality we don't know about. And here he is. The series does plenty of work explaining that in the asylum he murdered and another massive missed opportunity and another dud from disney marvel on d plus oscar isaac deserves better he's a good actor but quite frankly the stephen grant persona just got annoying almost annoying as layla ethan hawk was fine but again there wasn't a lot to work with and it should have been a lot more like daredevil and a lot less like shang chi aside from having a positive masculine male problem disney marvel has a hero problem meaning they have a problem with heroes they don't like them they seem almost apologetic and that really makes it very hard when you're in the superhero business and once again we have very inexperienced writers and bumbling morons trying to handle issues with complexity like disassociative identity disorder and which they i mean i don't know if it was accurate but dramatically it was handled really well this is only the first of two bait and switch marvel properties in one week things bait and switch i assume he means what like you have a male hero and it's the female hero because like layla is not the hero of moon knight moon knight is the hero of moon knight or more specifically steven and mark are the heroes of moon knight how do you watch that and not get it jesus this haven't been going that great at disney and marvel yeah, look, they're doing really bad. Uh, let's, I mean, look at that. Doctor Strange 2 only brought in 180, or I guess I should say 187.4 million dollars over the weekend. Oh. Doctor Strange 2 kicks off a blockbuster season conjuring a magical 185 million opening. Uh, box office mojo, you don't have to sugarcoat it. We know that was a huge bomb for Doctor Strange 2. That was a that was a huge miss for them. A uh, hard at eighty five million. That's all they got. Wow, Disney Disney's probably gonna go. They're probably gonna go bankrupt after this for sure. What is he talking about? Oh my god, yeah, Bo stocks are down. Ooh, Jesus Christ, the movie just made a hard eighty five million dollars. Jesus. Well, their one shining beacon 
isn't shining anymore and it's not helping. And this all lays at the feet of Kevin Feige, who should have quit after Endgame, a product of the Kevin Feige processing plant. Well, that about wraps it up for Layla Saves Stevie, and that can't be undersold. I almost forgot to mention that the costumed character of Moon Knight is only in roughly 20 minutes of the entire series. Layla got to save Mark, Steven, and Moon Knight multiple times, and Conchu, and she got the big hero moments because this is the latest entry into the MCU. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you did Here's what I think is interesting about this guy, because yes, I would use the term interesting watching this stuff. This is, this is interesting because He's talking about how Steven's a beta. And he has beta in the thumbnail. So he's got my head thinking on betas. And what I see watching this video is neurotic, whatever his true name is. He is a massive beta. I don't know how else to describe him. I don't like using the term beta, but this guy's a beta. He cannot handle women in any position of power whatsoever. Like at all. A woman does anything proactive, he freaks out. I was semi-joking on the last thumbnail where I said women scare him, but it truly seems like women scare him. He cannot handle a woman having any sort of authority or uh, power or just anything. He's... Would incel be the right word? I, he seems like an incel. He cannot handle women just being women, not being passive. Hero women can be heroes too. Then there's nothing wrong with that. And he just doesn't seem like he can fucking handle that. This is a terrible review of Moon Knight. Not only was it boring, he is a boring reviewer. His clips are not funny. At best, they're boring. He throws in little clips. At best, they're boring. They're usually cringe. But he cannot handle strong women at all. A woman does anything proactive. He's like, oh, he, it's like he, he expects all women to just be like classic, like trad wives or something. Jesus Christ, dude. This is unbelievably sexist. You understand that, right? The MCU, the whole thing, it's sexist. Period. This is sexism. I cannot stress that enough. If you are using the term MCU unironically or uncritically, you are sexist. If you are taking this seriously, that's sexism. And you need to look at yourself. Because this is some fucked up shit. I am disturbed by this. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs>